So when we discussed the law of capture and the legal case Pearson v. Post, which incidentally happened back in New York in 1805, we learned how you can become the true owner of something, particularly in situations where it is unclear who has possession. Now we're going to learn about how you can become the true owner of something using a different law, the law of custom. When you're riding an escalator, notice how people walk or sometimes run up the left side and stand on the right. Now, as far as I know, there's no local law or ordinance requiring people to do that. It just happens. It has become a social custom. Now, think about all the social customs that are out there, giving up your seat for an elderly person on the bus, not making a phone call in the movie theater, and so on. Now, most of the time, property law is made by the government, either by the legislature or by the courts, and is used by society. But once in a while, the reverse is true. Property law is made by society and is used by the courts, and we call this custom law. And the case of Ghent v. Rich basically gives us a rule that helps courts figure out when to enforce common social behaviors or customs. Custom law helps us figure out when to codify these these customs into laws. And in other words, uh, custom law tells us when to make these customs official in a court of law. So let's revisit the turtle swimming around the tide pool idea. And let's say that you went after a turtle and that you've got the turtle secured in a bag, ready to be carted away, when suddenly a little girl tugs on your arm and she tells you that the local custom is to give a turtle a name before you can gain possession of it. And she tells you that she's already named him Speedy, and she makes you take the turtle out of the bag so she can show you how she scribbled the name across his shell. Now this sounds a little fishy to you, so you ask around and sure enough this is the way that turtle hunting has been done on that particular beach for many decades. So we see this turtle naming business is a local custom, but is this a custom that the law should recognize? Should people be able to use the government's power to enforce this turtle naming custom? We can't just let people make up the rules all the time because that would be very confusing and chaotic. So how do we decide? Well, the case of Gen v. Rich, which came from Massachusetts in 1881, gives us three criteria to use in deciding whether a court should legally recognize a given custom. First, the custom should have limited application, meaning that we don't want to impose the custom in places where people don't know about the custom. This is because we care about notice, the idea that people should be given a chance to know the law before they're expected to follow it. In our turtle example, just because one community requires the naming of turtles before they become property, it doesn't mean that other communities will also be familiar with such a weird rule. So applying it broadly could lead to confusion. It might also mess up other customs that work better for people in different places. Second, the custom should have long duration because this makes us confident that it's a stable, deeply ingrained custom that's sort of withstood the test of time, not just something that was randomly made up or something new that we can't say for sure will work very well. So here the turtle naming ritual has been going on for a long time, maybe for decades. So we know that it has some sort of time-honored legitimacy and that it gives people a set of rules that they can count on when they're turtle hunting. Lastly, the custom should be necessary, meaning that without it, the system would break down. Now remember in the Ghent case, we were dealing with a fishing business that was very important to society and it was a business that we wanted to continue to work well. But in our little turtle hunting example, we might think that the individual need for turtles isn't so important to society in the grand, in the grand uh, scheme of things. On the other hand, maybe turtles are scarce, and if people don't agree on a way to lay claim to a turtle, there could be conflict or maybe even violence. So the custom might help to maintain peace and order. If after applying the law of custom criteria, we think the turtle naming custom should 
be enforced, then the little girl would probably win possession because she followed the custom. And if not, if we don't think the custom should be enforced, then you would probably win possession because we saw the law of capture would favor your having shoved the turtle into the bag and sealing it. So if you really think about it, there's four possible outcomes. Either both custom and capture law are both on the same side, meaning either you or the girl would win under either law, or custom and capture law are on opposite sides, meaning that the result would be different depending on which law you follow. And this just depends on the facts of the situation.